Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what opportunities presented itself to you after you appeared in Unsigned Hype? Um, shit, with the, un- with the Unsigned Hype, it was more like, um, like I said, you know, like just local people wanted, wanted me to do shows and stuff, you know. Yo, we doing the show here, man. I'll throw you $200, $300, man, do a show here. Uh, this, this is back in the day, you know, that was like, that was like a lot of money to get on a mic and rap for like, 20 minutes <laughs> you know what i'm saying right good money right. back then good money back then but um as as for opportunities like i said um pmd got a hold of me i never sent in no demo and nothing like that you know um from what i from what i understand is um jesse west was shopping his um well, his work with on um, the third eye seven third eye cypher and um that what song was one I did with Jess, and that he heard that song was like, "Who that dude with you on that one?" He's like, "Oh, that's my man, Top Quality." And he was like, "Yo, get me in touch with him." So that's how PMD PMD got in touch with me. And then, not to mention, um, Jess told him like, "Yo, he in the unsigned." Uh, I mean, that type of thing. You see what I'm saying? So right. That's how that really went down. You know what I mean? Then PMD got in touch with me. He sent me a card in my project right in front of my project. I got the limousine waiting for me. And then we, we shoot this shit on the phone. And then he like, well, yo, you know, hop in the shower with everybody, man. Just go downstairs. Your car waiting for you, TQ. And he ain't even know I had the front. My window right to the front. I live 3A. So I, I could look out my window and see the front of the building. I'm like, oh, damn. I look out the window. I'm like, damn, they got a nice white limousine. That, that's my, I'm like, mama, look, that car there for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the projects. I'm in the projects. They're like, I'm going to the I ain't going to the prom, nigga. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to get up with some people to make some music. You know what I mean? Some real official people, like you know what I mean? Right. So, so that that's what the, that's what came from that man getting up with um you know with PMD and um Schumer management. You know, word up. That's what that's that's what that led to. I Me mean, doing some shows, man. Going on tour, you know, with Daz Effects and um Wu Tang Clan. I did a lot of shows with Wu Tang Clan in the beginning. A lot of people don't know about you know. At, at one point, at one point, this is the truth. You could ask Wu Tang in the beginning. I'm talking about in the beginning. We on the same record label. I'm on RCA record label. He on, they on the RCA record label. I'm on the subsidiary though. You see, what I mean, from PMD. And uh, at one point of this tour, I'm talking about the first probably like the first probably month of this tour, man. The lineup. Wu Tang didn't feel like the lineup was right. Like you know, what I mean, like meaning. I, the last people that was going on the stage was literally Daz Effects was the last, but before Daz Effects was me. You see what I'm saying? That's how that lineup was going down. Wu Tang was on like before me, in other words. For real. Wu Tang Clan was on before, on before me. And the reason being was because when Wu Tang came out, Daz Effects was already a double platinum act. You see what I'm saying? So you had to respect Daz. They was already a double platinum act. You know what I mean? So you couldn't. They had to go on last, you know what I mean? So midway through that tour, that was the first, um, you know, United States tour. We did 40 in the United States. That was the first tour that I did, me me personally, coming from my, you know what I mean? Don't, don't forget, I'm just a regular regular M- MC. Well, not a regular MC, because my style is definitely a little, a, a lot of bit different than a lot of these rappers out here, in other words. And a lot of these rappers can't do a lot of these different styles that I'm able to do, in other words. A lot of these rappers only got one style, or two at the most. You know what I mean? And every time they write a song, they got the same style. That's the difference between them and me. I got endless, multiple styles. You know what I mean? Com- You'll never hear me sound the same on any track. Right. Not, not on any track. And you know right. I mean? That's just my my forte, my, my 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 motto, whatever. Anyway, you know, like I like I was just talking about, like you know, shit. I mean, when it when it came down to that, I might have lost my train of thought just now. But <laughs> just the tour, the tour, <laughs> you you and Wu Tang and Das. Yeah, like like I said. All right, so boom. Mid, all right, so midway through that tour, we did change up the lineup. Midway through that tour, we did change up the lineup to whereas. Wu Tang ended up like after a month, and I didn't even care. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they was making a big deal about it. Like, I had something to do with the lineup. You know what I mean? I'm a new dude. Like, you know what <laughs> I mean? And not to mention, there's like 15 of y'all. It's just top quality. You know what I mean? I ain't even got a damn hype man. 
But um, they they switched up that after like a month. Like then it was like Wu Tang came on, and then Dolls Effects. You know what I mean? Like I came mm. on before Wu Tang. In other words, like they switched it up. Right. You know what I mean, but yeah. that that went on for like I did shit. We did that for two years. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, I I did I did a lot of shows with like people who I mean one time shows like where I did it with like um too short. I bet too short. What a pimp. I'll talk about what a pimp, what a pimp, what a pimp for real. Like <laughs> real, for real. People talking all that. No, he's they he, too short is really a pimp. Like to the point, this is true. The chicks that Dodds Effects was with, they left with too short. That's true. <laughs> that was true. And let me tell you, I'm in I'm in the, you know, in the back VR. You know what I was glad? I was glad I didn't have a girl with me. <laughs> Cause I was like, you know what? <laughs> the way this dude is pimping, my girl probably go with this nigga too. <laughs> real, 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 this dude big pimping. You know what I mean? Big pimping, like money. Yes, he got money because he throw it right in your damn face. Don't even care about that five hundred. Like it's nothing. You know what I mean? He did it twice. Just threw right. some money. Just left it there like it was nothing. <laughs> and I you know I ain't nobody went to touch it. I know that. I know I wasn't going to touch it. I thought that was the setup. <laughs> right. I know that's right. <laughs> Word it up. You know me. I stay in my lane, baby. Word it no up. Doubt. I wanted to get out the room though. I ain't gonna lie. I remember that night, you know, because after the show, you gotta be in like a room where that where everybody was performing, all the VIP people and all that. See, when it's that time of the day, that's when I want to get the hell out of there. You know what I mean? I want to go mingle with some people that want fuck, but want to mess with me. You know what I mean? I like, want to kick it with T.O.P. quality go have some fun. You know what I mean? I don't really care about anybody else's fun. I like to have fun, too. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> right up. No hey, doubt. You, <laughs> talked a, you talked a little bit about PMD sending the limo to pick you up. What do you remember about the early uh, conversations and direction uh, uh, going into your debut album? Well... PMD, he was all about, honestly, what I remember most is his, just telling him, I mean, telling me actually about how when I, like, all right, the beat start first, of course, when you start to rap, right? The beat start. And then you about to start rapping. But before you start rapping, the beat come in, right? Now, will, will your brain got to be, this is the stuff PMD used to tell me is what I'm telling you. This ain't some stuff I'm telling, I'm saying for me. This is what PMD used to say to me. So when the beat drop. Now you're in the cockpit. You're flying in the cockpit now. All right. Now it's on the runway because the beat is coming. Now you about to rhyme and take it up in the air. So now when you come in with your verse, TQ, you coming up, you taking off the ground. You in the cockpit, you taking off the ground. And when you got to come in nice, you got to come in smooth. And then let the, let the bottom of the wheels come up underneath you, TQ. And, and while you flying, like take it from there and just let it. That's what PMD used to always tell me about how I gotta be in the cockpit. Everything is about the cockpit. This the cock. I'm in the cockpit flying. I gotta. Sometimes you know the the wind. Like the people might might you might not. They might not feel you or something. They might feel some type of way. But you know what? That's just the wind blowing. The turbine. The turbulence. That's the turbulence, brother. The turbulence come. You gotta know how to get out of that cockpit. That by freaking up your lyric by same lyric. By, by your tone, your tone now. You got your tone. Your tone is important now. Blah blah. You know this used to beat me in the head about different, different stuff. You know him and um D Wade. D Wade, my man. He was a uh, manager for Schumer Management. D Wade used to always be on some cockpit shit too, and all some old. You know, you gotta fly high, fly low, mid sea. You know, everything is about flying it. Man. It was the fly, the flizz nigh. I got the fly. I'm fly. I'm the flizz nigh. If you listen to my album, caught up in the flizz nigh. That was rubbing off me. I'm like, everything is flying, flying. Damn, I'm in the flizz nigh. I'm flying, I'm flying, flizz nigh. I'm in, you know, I'm making shit up now. You know what I mean? The flizz nigh. They even asked me, TQ, what does the flizz nigh mean? I, I wrote a song called Caught Up in the Flizz Nigh. It was the flizz like we was flying, but NY was just because I was from New York. That's how I got the flizz and I. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Honestly. You know what I'm saying? Then I used to come up with just different metaphors that no one I don't think ever got like. Once I said I was straight like 0852 and no one understood how I was straight like that. Right. Then I was like, well, if you look at your phone and you go 0852, that's how straight I am. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know those letters. I mean, even though those numbers ain't straight, that's how straight I am. If you, you know, zero, I'm straight <laughs> like 0852. You know what I'm saying? I was just on some other shit. You know what I mean? I was just on some other. You know, that's who I am. You know what I mean? I see things a little differently. 
I would hope everyone else <laughs> sees things differently, you know, word up and all that. But yeah, right. um, but yeah, 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 yeah. PMD definitely taught me a lot of um stage presence and stuff like that because you know you got to think I was the only person on stage and stuff, you know. Well, I'm not the only person on stage, but when I when I go do the top quality show, I don't got no hype man. You know what I mean? I'm it's just me. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> yeah. So you right. know, so so he definitely definitely showed me some stage. Um, and not not just him. When you're on tour, man, and you got access to all these famous people, man, you know, you learn, you learn stage, you learn stuff from them being on stage and you being on stage on the side looking at them. Or you might, you know, you could position yourself where you want to position yourself to learn what you want to learn. You know what I mean? Right. You a DJ, you position yourself to more where the DJ's at, like you get a good view of him. You know what I mean? If you more interested in the, in, in, in the rapper or the artist or whatever, you go position yourself right there on the, on the, on the edge. Y'all want to see it all. You know what I mean? For real. I want to see the crowd. I want to see him too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I learned I learned a lot from 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 all them, man. Daz effects, you know, Wu Tang especially, Math, you know, shit, old dirty bastard, you know, them dudes just love me for real. Them no dudes doubt. love me. They, you know what I mean? They love me for real. No doubt. When um Magnus Opus hit the streets, uh, you were in constant rotation on BT, on TV raps. Uh, how did life change for you when that dropped? dramatically man i'm talking people who i don't know know me and if anybody know that feeling this shit is it's ass it's crazy i'm talking about i'm talking about people running up on you they really know you they like i mean like you don't know them but they really know you like yo what up yo oh man yo and yo Yo, yo, we gotta, yo, yo, we gotta catch up, man. Let's go with a drink, yo. We gotta, we gotta. Yeah, I don't even know these, like, the, yo, dramatic change. I'm talking. You can't really say where you gonna go. You gotta just show up. <laughs> you can't really. Sometimes, most of the time, you can't really. You see anybody going in one way. You gotta go and do the back door. You know what I mean? Different things, different things, little things change. You know, here and there. Um. Um, you always got to roll with somebody. You can't, you can never really roll by yourself because somebody will recognize you. And man, you find yourself trying to be nice standing there for an hour and a half. <laughs> I mean, you had stuff to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, I'm even talking about older people. You know, I was taught to respect my elders. You so, you know what I mean? So when you got somebody like shit. In a seventies, like yo, top quality, yo, I love your your music. You know, you gotta stop and talk. You know, you can't, yo, I gotta go, blah blah blah. You know, I'm, that's just not who I am. You know what I mean? But um, that's what really changed the most, man. When I was on on that BET countdown, I made it to number two on BET, and um, and uh, video vibrations made it to number two on that countdown too. You know what I'm saying? Nobody remember the number two, dude. <laughs> it's the true. But you know what I'm saying? It, it does change your life because, like I said, what changed my life most was, like I said, it was a lot of people who knew, who recognized who I was. And, you know, just pretending like they know me and just want to hang out with me. I don't want to be around people like that. Like, I just don't. I mean, it's cool that you might like my music and all that, but we ain't got to hang out and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I got my old friends I like to kick it with. You know what I mean? Do what we do. Create how we create. Word up. I don't right. really got time for anybody like that. that. Hence why I moved literally from 20, 20 years ago. I moved out of, out of New York. Well, you know, I live closer to Buffalo now. I live, I live in the country now. I live in the country now. You know what I mean? I live closer to Buffalo now. Gotcha. Overall, yeah. what do you remember most about those recording sessions for that album? For that album, um, man, I just remember it being fresh. You know what I mean? Just everything just being fresh. Like I was... um. Like I was creating history, man. I can't explain it no other than that. It was like pretty much everything I did, it was like I was creating history. That's what it was like. That's all I can remember it. I mean, you know, sometimes I would just run through these songs, one takes. Most of those songs on them albums are one take songs, just one take. It's just that's uh, the freaky, icky, bleaky. You know, sometimes I would just freestyle a little bit and then come back to what I wrote to make the verse longer. You know, just freestyle it. If they'd be like, yo, we need like two more, four more bars or whatever. I just, I wouldn't even go to the pen and pad. I just freestyle that, man, real quick, real, real fast. You know, I'll be at top of my game. I'll be at, at this point, no lie, at this point, you couldn't even have a conversation with me without me rhyming. Like, 
I could just talk to you, regularly talk to you, but everything I would say would rhyme, for real. It's right. crazy. <laughs> it was scary. It was actually scary, brother. It was like a curse and a gift at the same time. Right. I got a, did I? There you go. <laughs> yeah. so, so after that album does its thing, where do you find yourself and what is the hit squad uh, going? What's going on with the hit squad at that point? Honestly, um, you know, we dropped the album. We did the tour. And um, when we were set to do the next album, you know, they sent me some beats. They was like, TQ, we got the beats for the next album. Um, not to mention, on that first album, I only used one of my producers, which was my my, my cousin, Destro, Kevin Mac. Mm. I, he was the only producer, you know, like I, I had, um, well, let me make sure now. Because for that album, I already had the album in my head, how I thought it should go, you know what I'm saying? And um, actually, I'm lying, because my man, um, sh- my man Squirrel from Mount Vernon, he did the messages from Uptown. So I had two producers that I used on that album that I knew. You see what I mean? Like on that path, when I was in the studio, that's when I was like, the studio I was going to was the same studio Biggie Smalls and like Jesse West was going to. So that's how I met them. And like me and Jess clicked. Me and Jess used to always kick it. So I didn't mind, I didn't mind messing with Jess like that. You know what I mean? I didn't mind Jess producing my tracks because Jess was also producing tracks for Biggie Smalls. Jesse mm-hmm. West produced a lot of tracks for Biggie Smalls' first album. If you look at the credits, Jesse West did a lot of the tracks. I don't know if Puff took credit for it, but I promise you, Jesse West did most of those tracks for Biggie Smalls or that first album, that Ready to Die album. I mean, that's the truth. But I was in the studio while I was working on that. Right. Um, um, shoot. Oh man, I don't know how I can keep losing my train of thought, but um, that's all good. Just after your debut album, The Hit Squad, uh, what what's going on with The Hit Squad, and, and why no second album immediately? I guess. Oh after yeah, we about the second album. Okay, so now boom, we doing the second album now. Like they gave me, I think they gave me four beats, and I had wrote, I had wrote four songs for these beats that they gave me. Right, and so boom, we go, and they gave it to me, and I had those beats for like maybe. At the most, two weeks. It might have been a week. You know what I mean? At the most, two weeks. But all I know is if I call you and say, let's get get into the studio, it means I'm ready. You know what I mean? I got I got it all written down. And I got it all ready, memorized. You know what I mean? Let's go. I'm ready. So we go into the studio. I never forget this. We go, this is go to do the second album. This is the second album. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to do what they gave me. When we go up in there, we have a quick meeting before I get in the booth. Like, yo, first of all, they got this beat playing that I'm not really feeling when I first walk in the studio. It sound like some uh, some Father MC shit or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sound like some different, different feel. I don't know if people know who Father MC is, but I'm an old school rapper. It's a different feel. It's almost like Chub Rock. Chub Rock was a different feel. You know what I mean? Of uh, When it comes to the beats. You know what I mean? So boom. They gave me the spew. They gave me the spew about how I'm gonna be the next father MC. And hear the lyrics, TQ, to this beat right here. These dudes handed me lyrics, dude, to this beat that was playing in the background. And I was supposed to go in the booth and spit these lyrics. True story. Wow. These dudes, I swear on everything I love, dude. These dudes try to take away my creative control, man. I wrote every song on that Magnum Opus album. You heard? Every lyric I wrote on Magnum Opus. You know what I mean? Now, you telling me on this album, I'm supposed to be spitting some lyrics that somebody else wrote? First of all, I don't even know who wrote these lyrics. And second of all, I'm not feeling all this love stuff y'all want me to talk about because I'm from the hood and I'm not talking about all this love, love, all this... He's talking about, they gave me this spiel about how I'm supposed to be the next father and see and all that. Yo, man, listen, I, yo, listen, I don't know if that was the sellout mode. Like, that's 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 the crossroads to me selling out or all I felt like was they took away my creative control, man. I felt disrespected. I felt some type of way. I know that. I was young. I'm older now. I'm wiser. I don't have no animosity towards PMD. But back then, when I stepped off, like I, like, I was like, really? I was like, yo, I think I might have said, hold on. Let me smoke something real quick. 
And I went outside like I was going to smoke a blunt or something. No lie. And I stepped off. I bought a hop right on the subway. It took off. You see what I'm saying? And then I ain't, I ain't talked to PMD again. You heard? Matter of fact, two years ago, I went to go visit my sister. She lived in Connecticut. I was like, I just showed up sp sporadically to surprise her sort of thing because I, I was coming to New York just to hang out for like a, a weekend. So I'm going to go see my sister. My sister was like, I'm going to see PMD tonight. <laughs> EPMD reunion, you should come with me. I said, well, I got two choices. I could probably go, right, and then um, literally get in, like, you know, I, 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 I would go with the back door, you know what I mean? I'd be like, yo, squad, quality, baby, I'm here, baby, it's been a while, you know what I mean? I just go to the back door, you know what I mean, with me and my sister, I'm with my sister, yo, we up in here, type of thing. I could, I could, I could run it like that, or I could do what I came to do, go chill with my peoples while I go have fun, you see what I mean? And that's what I chose to do. I went to go chill by people. I couldn't wait to go chill with them, but that's not what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I'm doing me right now. Word up on everything. Right. Word up. Wow. That's word. that's crazy. So it's that was story. no doubt. That was like 93. So catch us up on what Top Quality has been up to. I know you got a new project, but in between that time, catch us up on some of the projects you've been a part of over the past 30 years. Um. Well, shoot, man. You got to think, man. All right. So boom. All right. I already told you the, I already told you the story about how um everybody started knowing who I was, man. It was crazy. People who I didn't know didn't know who I was. So, literally 20 years ago, man, I moved to the country. I moved to the country. And um when I tell you there's more cows than people here, it's the truth. There's more cow people in this county where I'm at. More cows than people. No, I was the only black person in this whole county. When I first moved there 20 years ago, there's no gas station in this town. There's no um, stoplight. There's no stop sign. There's no stop. There's That's how there's dirt roads out here. <laughs> I'm in the country country. Nobody know who, nobody definitely know who I am. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a, a start of life. Like it was a, re, it was a rebirth for me personally. Like if you ever want to do something crazy in, in life, Start your whole life over. I'm talking about where you don't know nobody. Nobody know you and you don't know nobody. Try that. Start literally over, man. I'm talking about fresh. You judge people from fresh. You know what I mean? And like I said, I met a lot of people. I, I, it was like the Lord sent me out here because I, let a, I met a lot of people out here, white people who don't like black people, but never met a black person. Then they met my ass. Now, all of a sudden, they want to meet a whole bunch of black people. They think every black person is like me. I keep telling them it's not true. I mean, I'm yeah, I do listen to rock and roll music. I'll jam out with you to some corn. You know what I mean? I'll listen to some, let's, let's, let's jam it out a little bit, you know, get my mind off of everything, you know. I, be, only because my brain is open like that, I can I can veer off a little bit. Like, I can listen to some rock and roll music. I can listen to some some heavy metal music. I can listen to some metal. You know what I mean? I can do that. It will come back to my realm. You know what I mean? I can do that. Not everybody can do that. You see what I'm saying? Right. But um, but um, yeah. I mean, the way I started my life out here, man, it, it's 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 been it's been the best thing that ever happened to me. Like I, I started a band. I got my own band now. You know what I mean? I'm the bass player of the band. I'm the lead singer. Too skinny. You know, we're doing our first music festival in Perrysburg, New York. First annual music festival featuring us. Um, I, I'm hosting um. May 5th, what is that? That's this week coming up. Shit, two days. I'm, I'm hosting um, a show with Jazzy Joyce, you know, DJ Jazzy Joyce, um, the 50th anniversary of hip hop, right there in the Bronx, 155th Street. You know what I mean? Representing for that. Um, so, you know, people still holler at me about different events and different shows. I've, I've been doing, like I said, I've been jamming out with the band, man. I've, been, I've never ever stopped making music, I've always made music. I just don't put it out to everybody to hear. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? But um, one thing I did, one thing that just hit me, like, literally, like, in the last two years is when you look up Top Quality on YouTube, you only really get that Magnum Opus album, and you might get that um that Who the Hell Am I, that, that, that EP I was telling you about when I was signed with New Image. But when it comes to, to music, man, I done wrote over a thousand songs, man. <laughs> Your boy right here wrote I'm like a ghostwriter, man. For real. I'm like a ghostwriter, man. Wow. I wrote a lot of songs. And um, 
I promised myself two years ago that I would make an album every year, if not two. Like this year, I'm coming out with two albums. I'm doing one with the band, the Bloody Staples. That's going to be the name of the album, Bloody Staples, Too Skinny, Bloody Staples. I think we're dropping a single. I think it's June 15th. And um, and like I said, the album I'm working on right now, and I already dropped the Word on the Street album in November, but I'm dropping the Turn Up album. It's going to be Bored with the Jedi, my, my peoples, you know, from White Plains and Austin and where I grew up, Doug Ruffin, uh, and with the uh, Invisible Man as well, White Plains. Uh, we're going to do this Turn Up album I'm working on in the... The single for that is going to drop. I think that's going to be June 15th, too. I think I might drop them on the same day. This, my my band and my my rap. You know what I mean? I got two two vehicles moving right now. So, right. you know, being life, when it comes to music, and not only just music, when it comes to life, it's all about doing what you love to do. Like, and it, it's not about being on the on the national stage because a lot of y'all don't even know that I'm actually the Say What Karaoke champion on MTV. I won that whole show. Top wow. of, I, not under top quality, under my real name. Not under top quality. It's me, but not under top quality. I never told them I was top quality. You see what I'm saying? Because if I told them that, then they would have labeled me as a professional entertainer. You know what I'm saying? So I had to give him my real name. And I, like I was a nobody. This was in 2003. I won the whole Say What Karaoke show on MTV, if people remember that show. Matter of fact, I did, in the finals, I did DMX. I did What's My Name in the finals, them and um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, to win it against those four black girls from Buffalo. Um, the four, you know, they had the the booming breast, the booming ass. Ooh, they was beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Them sisters was beautiful. I ain't going to lie. But you know what? This is what I knew. The people want to see me in a string bean bikini. You know what I mean? <laughs> on some other shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I want to see TQ in a string bean bikini. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Acting a nut. You know what I'm saying? That, that, was, that, was, that was actually one of the jokes that Marlon, Marlon Wayne's made about me. Don't, don't think that that's what really happened. That's what he said. That's what Marlon Wayne said about me. He was one of the judges. And uh, Carson Daly was a judge back then. This was in 2003. If y'all want to go peep that, I actually won that Say What Karaoke show. I'm the national karaoke champion. I sing rock and roll music. I do Guns N' Roses, Led Zeppelin, you know what I mean? Aerosmith. I can hit the notes. That's what dope. About? That's dope. About? You, you talked a little bit about your uh, latest project, Word on the Streets. Where can the uh, people find that at if they're looking? They can find that everywhere, man. You go to Apple Music, go to Spotify, YouTube. You go anywhere, anywhere you want to buy music. Buy it, man. Go get that. You know what I mean? Word on the street. Top quality. Go check that out. It's got 17 songs on it. You know what I mean? It's uh, it, 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 In the beginning, it was just supposed to be a mix hip-hop, like a mix rap CD. Like, just people make mixtapes and all that, you know, different artists and all that. I just wanted to do a little style. Check out this 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 style. 17 different styles. None of the styles sound the same. You'll never, ever hear me sound the same on any song you know what i mean that's i'm a chameleon when it comes to i just hear the beat and then i know i can hear how the style go and it's never the same style for example no matter what beat you give grand pooper he gonna have that same style right <laughs> i'm at grand pooper i used to say that to him all the time he said and then this is what grand pooper said to me because my style go with every beat, TQ. <laughs> <laughs> so you, can, you can look at it two different. You can look at it both ways. I'm just saying you can look at it two ways. Yeah, you know? <laughs> right. Well, TQ, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Uh, good to see you. Um, before we get out of here, uh, any last um, thoughts? Uh, any messages for the fans who've been uh, down with you since day one? Man, I'm just happy to be back at doing this, you know what I mean? Because like I said, when I said I moved away from where I'm, I was from 20 years ago and I wanted to start my life over, I, I didn't want to rap no more. I didn't want to make music no more. I just wanted to raise my daughter, you know what I mean? Because I had, I had a child that I wasn't in my child's life, you know what I mean? Like call him every week, you know what I mean? Go see him on the weekend maybe every other week, you see what I'm saying? That's not enough. But when I had my daughter, I just wanted to be in her life like every day, like you see what I'm saying? Right. And 
I didn't care about the music. I didn't care about what I loved. I didn't want to do what I loved anymore. But I've grown to love what I love to do again. So, and sometimes it takes you losing yourself. Like, forget everybody. Like I said, I told you, I moved where I moved. I didn't know nobody. Nobody knew me. It took me that to to get that love back. Because I would have never got it back staying where I was at. Everybody talking what they talking and all that. You know what I mean? Out here, there's not a hip-hop station at all on the radio. You know what I mean? You can't listen to no hip-hop. Unless you got a CD or you want to go you know, look up some hip hop, you know, if you want to go look it up and all that, but it's real easy to stay away from it. You know what I mean? If you want to out here in the country. Right. Um, but, um, all I want to say is, um, whatever it is you love to do in life, man, if you love to do it, do that. Cause he might die tomorrow, man. Hey, nobody know where they go. Do what you love to do, man. Worried up. I, I love what I do. You know what I mean? I love. I love what I do. I love to inspire people. I love. To, you know, I love that I, the fact that I'm. I have the talent enough to like. You could just drop a beat. I, I could just come off the top of my head and just talk about something, man. Just make somebody laugh. Put a smile on someone's face. That's just my gift, though. Everybody ain't got that gift. You know what I mean? Right. That's just my gift. You know what I mean? But shit, other people are talented in different fields and. Even in my same field, you know what I mean? I just would just tell them to do it. There's going to be haters. Let the hate keep hating. <laughs> let, let, let the haters hate. And, you know, just keep motivating and keep doing your thing, man. That's all I'm going to tell everybody, man. Keep doing your thing because your boy right here going to always keep doing his thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Always, always keep doing my thing. And also, I got my own clothing line, Top Merch, man. That's how quality merch. It's probably backwards right now, but yeah, because I got my backwards right now, but I got my own merch too, Top Quality Merch. You could always order that up. Hit me up on Facebook or shit. There's a phone number if I can leave. Um, it's 716 244 2628. You could just leave a message, your size and your um your color that you want and, um, and your address. And we mail that right out to you. Word up. Awesome. Awesome. Everybody take note of that. Keep supporting your boy Top Quality. New projects coming. You can catch him in the Bronx uh, this week. Yes, yes. May 5th. Word up. 155th oh. Street. 454, I believe it is. 155th All right. Street. All right. Thank you so much. This has been History Lesson. That's your boy Top Quality. I'm the journalist sincere. Thank you so much, Top Quality. I appreciate you, brother. Love you, man. Anytime. Love you. One love. Absolutely. Let's stay in touch. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks. All right. One love, baby. One love.